The Pacific Ocean licked the heat from her feet. Cassie shouldn't have been there. Shouldn't have been indulging herself when there was a paper to revise and a four-year-old left in the care of her overly generous roommate. Lark was her daughter, her responsibility. But once again, Cassie had accepted Terry's offer to take Lark to church and keep her for the rest of the day. She needed a moment to breathe, a moment to figure out what she was doing with her life, why she was continuing her education in an area in which she'd exhausted her possibilities. She wiped sweat from her forehead. At 85 degrees, the day was hot, even for mid-March in Southern California. Her Pacific Northwest self hadn't acclimated to the dry heat in the three years since making the move. Instead, her body cried out for the dampness of the Oregon coast. At that moment, even the sting of cold rain pelting her skin would have been as welcome as a hug. Kneeling forward, she let the foam curl over her hands, felt the sand wash away beneath her palms. The tug of home pulled at her like the receding tide, she was no longer the awkwardly shy girl who had left for college with the support and encouragement of her eclectic community. Only her aunt, the woman who had raised Cassie on her own, was a true relation. But Gulls Bay had provided a ragtag family circle. There was Mr. Watkins, the old man who drank his coffee at Aunt Shasta's shop every morning. Mrs. Collins, the baker whose tasty treats were a calling card for the little town, and Miss Aubrey, her aunt's best friend and helping hand to everyone. She even found herself missing Mrs. McPherson, who worked in the church office and knew everyone's business. They'd been all Cassie needed, without having to share the subtleties of familial features. They'd been hers, until she'd let them all down and run away. Behind Cassie, the laughter and shouts of the beach crowd drowned out the calls of the marine birds she loved so much. Days like this one made her wonder why she'd ever left Oregon. She could have done her graduate work there, or skipped it altogether, finding a job she loved rather than turning into a coward and running south with only mounting student loans as a reward. Cassie pulled herself from the pocket of her shorts to check the time. She'd missed three calls. Prickles ran across her skin as fears for Lark pulsed through her bloodstream. She swiped the phone to life and checked. Every single one had come from her aunt, yet it wasn't Saturday. Shasta's calls came in religiously at the end of the week, arriving with updates on everyone in Gulls Bay and a solid reprimand for Cassie to get herself back to church and to Jesus. Yet when Cassie really thought about it, this hadn't been altogether true for a couple of months. Shasta had missed a call here and there, and the conversations had grown short, as if her aunt were letting her go. Turning toward the parking lot, Cassie slipped her feet back into flip-flops and swiped the screen to return Shasta's call. After only one ring, the call was picked up, but the voice on the other end wasn't the one she'd expected. Cassie? It's Aubrey. I have your aunt's phone. Her heart crashed. She gripped the rail along the three steps off the beach. What's going on? Shasta is okay. Her aunt's best friend had a voice that could soothe a hungry sea lion. But still, Cassie's skin grew clammy as the seconds of not knowing ticked by. She took a fall right after church, and you know Shasta, she was in a hurry to get the shop open for the lunch crowd. Without Aubrey's having to say the words, Cassie could picture the set look on Shasta's face and the exact location of her fall. On the steep stairs that overlook the ocean? Those are the ones. I tried to get ahead of her, but she took off while I was saying goodbye to Lillian McPherson. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. Shasta has a mind of her own, stubborn and hard-headed. Luckily, she seems to be physically tough, too, so, what's the damage? Cassie couldn't help but smile as one of Shasta's pet phrases fell from her own lips. Why are you making the call if she's fine? I said she was okay. In my mind, that's a whole lot different than being fine. 